So I want to start you on Flare On, which is a really great extra credit part of this class. Um, so if you go to the projects, these are the projects that use Windows Server 2016, which is fine to analyze a lot of those malware samples we got and to do things like hacking EXE. But to really do good stuff, you want to move up to Flare VM. Flare VM is a product from uh, Mantient, the company that wrote our book and uh, the expert in instant response. And they made this thing. So what you do, you could do it on Azure if you want to, but I'm just using a local VM. You have to have a Windows 10 VM and you can get one for free from Microsoft. Uh, they give it one so you can test a browser. So you, this is where you, do, you, if you go on Azure, you'll get a virtual computer on Microsoft network, but I found they kicked me off. So there's some issue about how much time they give you and what the rules are, but that gives you a Windows 10 machine you can connect to remotely in the cloud. But if you want to make it locally, you can do it here. And what I did was I downloaded um, a virtual machine, Windows 10 machine from Microsoft. So you just get this one here, MS Edge on Win 10, and you can just get it on whatever virtualization system you have. I used VMware, but you could use um, VirtualBox or any of these others. You just download this file and you get a Windows 10 machine that will run and it always has this username and that password unless you change it. And it has really nothing much installed on it, but it's a fine Windows 10 machine and it's only good for, I think, 90 days before it will start complaining about licensing. So, which doesn't bother me because when you're doing malware analysis, you frequently have to throw away the machine and rebuild it. Or you can try using a snapshot, although I never have bothered with that much. I'm happy to just build them from zero. But then um, you put on Firefox and then you go and install the Flare VM. And this takes a long time. I think the first time I did it, it took 10 hours. It depends on your network speed and your processing speed and stuff. This is just a script you run that installs a whole pile of tools. And if you've taken the pen testing classes, you've probably gotten used to Kali. Kali Linux is the pen testers Linux distribution that has a couple of hundred pen testing tools built into it. And this installs a whole bunch of code analysis tools, of malware analysis tools. So it just gives you a whole suite of like modern, up to date, important tools. And so it supplements the other projects. The other projects use that book, Malware Analysis, which is getting to be pretty old. And the tools in there are getting to be five, six years or more old. It's not really got the latest, best tools. And this totally does. It's constantly updated. In fact, I just had to update this project and change the flag because they changed some of the tools since I wrote these instructions just a few months ago. So, so after you run that script, it will run for hours, download stuff, restart many times, and install all kinds of stuff in your machine. So you will end up with a machine like this here. This is my Flare VM, and I'll close this for now. So you get a Windows 10 desktop, and it has some information about the licensing, and it's only good for a certain period of time and stuff. And then when you run that, I put on Firefox, and then when you run that script, it um, creates, loads this thing called Box Starter and Chocolatey that are just some kind of systems to automatically install software. And when it's all done, it creates this folder called Flare. And when you open the Flare folder, it has all these categories of tools, Android debuggers, developer tools, .NET. So, you know, forensic tools, hex editors, all kinds of goodies are in here. And I've begun exploring it and using it. And uh, it's very good to analyze malware in here. So I have a whole series of projects. You can also write code in here. It loads various versions of the Microsoft coding platforms. So you can, we'll write some code and analyze it. And tonight we're going to do some simple analysis. So let's, we're going to do that tonight. We're going to write some code. So the project I want to show you tonight is 122. All right. So I make this let me shove this to the side because I don't really need these instructions very much except just to orient me. And I don't need this to be quite as wide. Let's see if I can fit things into the part of the screen that is being twitched. All right, that might work. So um, you now, in order to write Microsoft code, if you want to do it the simple way, what you do is you go into Flare, you use the developer command prompt. So it's Flare Developer Tools, Visual C++ Build Tools, 
and it has a few versions of it, but it looks like the main one is installed is Visual C++ 2015, so we'll use that one. I really don't care what version of C++ I'm using. And I'm going to x86 so I can write 32-bit code. So we're just going to start with 32-bit code, and I'm going to use um, native build tools command prompt. So it'll write code intended to run on this platform. And I'm just going to change this to use bigger fonts just for the video. So I'll make it 20 Lucida bold. All right. And it, there we are. So now it's bigger. So now what I did was I made a directory. I've already done it called PE. And then I can do a dir. And you'll see there's a program here called hello.cpp. And so if I notepad that program, uh, type a little better. Okay, there we are. You'll see what's in there. And what's in there is a very tiny little program that doesn't do much of anything. This is just a classic Hello World program in C++. So you include IO stream to get an input output library and using namespace standard, and then you print hello. So I already compiled this. You compile it with just CL slash EHSC. That's the simple Windows command line compiler. And then you have hello. You can run the executable, and it says hello. So this is about the simplest computer program you could possibly have. And we're going to analyze that program. And we're going to use PEView, which is a very nice tool that comes with Flare VM. So you just type the magnifying glass search and just search for it. All the tools that are pre-installed, just give it the first few letters and it finds it. So you open up PE View, and now you can open the file. So it's CPE Hello. And here's PE View, and it's remembering from before that I already set it to use nice big fonts for the video. So let me make my window a little bigger and make this maximized. There we go. So this is what you is what a Windows binary looks like. It starts with MZ. It always has this message, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. Then it has the portable executable header down here. Then, as you scroll through it, it's got the names of sections here, like text, R data, and data, and so on. So this is a pretty cool little program, and it's good to see the various parts of it. So the image DOS header is this thing. And that goes from 0 up to 3C. And this is, I think, now unused. This is left over to running the obsolete MS DOS uh, operating system. And it's just here for historical reasons. Then you have a stub program, which is the thing that prints this cannot be run in DOS mode. And that's also used only in obsolete MS DOS machines that nobody's using anymore. So uh, the first 256 bytes of the file are just junk left over from the past. This is where it all starts, with the image NT headers, with the PE, where the portable executable file is. That's what we care about. OK. And so this is the um, portable executable header. And there's a plus sign here. You can expand this into area. Here's the signature, which is the PE at the start of every file. And here's the file header that has the compilation date. You can see I compiled this today. Uh, and so you can see exactly when the program was compiled. And this is used to connect modules that were compiled at the same time and to guess what time zone they were compiled in if you assume people work from 9 to 5. And uh, you can see this is intended to run on a 32-bit machine. And you got the optional header here. And this has information, like I mentioned before, the address of the entry point. If you're um, Ali Debug is not able to find the main routine. It will just start at this address. That's where the code will start, at 12DC. All right. And this has the import table, um, which is image optional header. Um, yeah, here's the import table. The export table is here, and the import table is here. This tells you where they are and how big they are. And you'll see them later. But uh, here's all the various sections that are used by this. The most important for us is the import and the export table. All right, and the image optional header. And uh, you've got the image base and such. All right. Uh, there's an issue of addresses here. Um, if you go to the optional header, uh, let me move this so I see it there. OK. 
Uh, if I go to the start of the image optional header up here, you can see the base of code, image base is 400,000. Remember I said this before, every Windows executable wants to load at 400,000 and it thinks it will load at 400,000. That's going to be its virtual address when it loads. Um, the size of the image is here. Um, 132 version value. Yeah, size of image. This is going to be the total size of all the memory location, all the memory segments that have to load. And there's a relative virtual address um, at the import table down here. Um, and that is here, the import table's relative virtual address. Notice these are zeros because I don't have an export table because an executable does not export symbols to let you run code from another program, but it does have an import table because it uses libraries. All right, and so you can find the import address table um, down here at another location, and you'll see that matches the start of the R data section when we get there. All right. And so now let's go to a section. Here's the text section. This is the header that contains the name. The names, by the way, are limited to eight bytes long. Dot text is the name of this section. And you can see three nulls at the end using up the remaining bytes. It has size and a pointer to the raw data. And you can play with understanding how the memory is laid out here. Um, I don't think I'll bother with it in detail. It's in the project. You can make a chart of how these things fit together. The different memory sections load at different addresses and have different sizes, so it doesn't pack them real tight in memory. There are gaps between them, which, by the way, uh, create places you can add malware to files. All right, and if you open it in Ollie Debug and run it, and look at the live section, you'll see, of course, that it does not load at 400,000 because you have um, address space layout randomization turned on in all modern versions of Windows, so it puts things and loads them somewhere else in memory, not starting at 400,000, but at some other location. All right, and so you can find the uh, import address table here in the R data section, and here you see all the Windows API calls. These are all Microsoft products, all these Windows calls into libraries, and if you scroll down here, it'll tell you which library, kernel32.dil. These are all kernel routines, and that's all this program uses, is kernel32 and all these functions just to print hello world. So that's the game, and, and so you get to play with that, and then there's a few challenges and flags to find by just analyzing files and figuring out what the problem is. And uh, uh, find about the sections, and here's some files that are damaged. You'll have to see what's broken and fix it. And you can see what you're doing in, in, in this PE view, and then you can fix it in a hex editor. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. It is It gets you used to uh, using this tool, and we'll use a lot more tools, and understanding how the PE header works and how the import table works is going to be essential for this uh, Windows internals part of the class using this Flare VM. All right, so I'm going to stop this one.